Hello, I'm Jason Davis, a distinguished engineer at Cisco in our developer relations group as part of the DevNet program. Today, I want to talk to you, the cloud developers, especially if you're using AWS Public Cloud, about Cisco Thousand Eyes and how you can use it as a cloud developer to get better insights as to the availability, latency, and packet loss and customer experience of the applications that you develop. This is a guided workshop, and it's going to be a multi-part series. In this part one, we're going to talk about what Thousand Eyes technology is and why it should matter to me as a cloud developer, the why and how it works. And then we're going to think about our topology and how we deploy our environments, because that will bear into where we place our monitoring agents. We'll learn how to procure the AWS Marketplace license for Thousand Eyes, and then we'll deploy the software agents using AWS CloudFormation. In part two, we'll go back to the Thousand Eyes portal and learn how to configure our tests, how to interpret the results, and then configure alerts so we can be made aware when there are problems going on with our environment. And then finally, in part three, we'll talk about some best practices in how to do advanced topics, such as session recording of transactions. As a cloud native developer, sometimes I feel like I develop some of the best things and then I throw it over the fence to my customers. But my applications are dependent on the big eye internet and there are outages all the time. Sometimes they impact me but many times they don't. So I often wonder, is this outage impacting me? Is it impacting everyone? Is it within my span of control? And what is my customer experiencing as my application uses dependent services across the internet? The Enterprise Management Associations group says that visibility should be a mission critical priority for a multi-cloud environment. You may not own the networks or the infrastructure, but you still own the outcome. And if your customers are unhappy, that could hurt your brand. So the situation is that we have a visibility gap. We have employees at home. They could be at a branch or a larger office. And sometimes in those environments, we have good visibility into what's going on. But as the equipment and as our traffic goes across the big eye internet in a shared infrastructure with private service providers and public and private cloud providers, we have very little visibility into that infrastructure. And then we also have SaaS dependencies. And as a developer, you're probably using GitHub and Docker Hub and Jira and many others. Well, we know that those solutions we don't own the infrastructure and we have limited visibility. So to help that, Cisco Thousand Eyes is a network intelligence SaaS platform and it gives you the ability to run a variety of tests against global vantage points and we can monitor really important services like DNS for name resolution. So not everybody uses IP addresses when they're browsing the internet probably nobody does. <laughs> Everybody uses a host name or a service name to access something. And those names get resolved to IP addresses that the network can route the traffic with. Well, we want to make sure that our name resolution is good. If you've registered a domain name, have you expired that registration and lost it? That's happened before. And uh, you don't want that to happen. You don't want to lose your precious domain name. We also need to understand the customer's responsiveness in their browser to our app. So how does that look when they are hitting multiple microservices around the environment? We have to think about the network pathing and connectivity if we have disparate services across the continent or even across the oceans. That could play into how our customers feel about our applications. And then voice and video streaming, if our apps are involving that, the connection quality plays a big part, whether it's buffering or losing packets and being very jerky. 
when we think about availability, latency, and packet loss measurements, there are a couple models. There's active measurements that would involve extracting telemetry from actual user traffic embedded in the routers and switches. And sometimes that's sniffer data, sometimes that's using traffic like NetFlow or SFlow uh, packets. And, um, but the reality is it comes from the network infrastructure. And if we don't, if we don't uh, use that equipment, if we're not responsible for it, then we can't generate the data or analyze it. So the pros of an active network model is that it's actual user traffic that you're looking at, but the cons are you only measure the traffic only when it's sent and it doesn't, doesn't gauge the readiness um, when there's no traffic, you don't know if you're ready for it or not. And the collectors have to be deployed and dependent on embedded features in the network infrastructure. Synthetic model is a slightly different. These are purpose-built collectors that simulate the user traffic. And the data would originate from software agents and they can be on just about anything, including the network infrastructure. They could be built into uh, Linux virtual machines that could be deployed as software instances wherever you want them. Some of those examples are Thousand Eyes, uh, the Cisco IPSLA uh, software agent that runs embedded in many devices, TTCP, which is a Linux utility that you can run in Ubuntu or Red Hat Linux. And uh, many people even use ping to help with uh, measuring availability. And the nice thing about synthetic measurements is that you can gauge your readiness even when user traffic isn't generated. So are you ready for the stock market to open? We can generate something that looks like stock market transactions even before the real stock market opens. Um, the con is that you have to deploy these agents into wherever your source and target destinations and paths are. Service assurance needs to contemplate the locations of the sources. Is that in a home? Is it in an office or a data center? And then where is it targeting? Another office? Another data center? A private cloud? A Microsoft Office environment? Uh, Oracle environment, SAP, or SaaS services like GitHub and Office 365, potentially even infrastructure as a service like Amazon Web Services. All of this plays into where we have to consider placing our sources and targets for our measurements. And we want to identify the poor user experience as it goes through potential campus environments or home environments through the wide area network and the public internet into other data centers or public cloud. Ideally, we get a historical look at what's going on so we can start to correlate outages to certain dates and times. Having a, an idea of path visualization also gives us a good sense of where tr traffic might be lost based on service providers and giving us an understanding of response time, latency, packet loss, bandwidth constraints, or jitter. And jitter is the variance of delay as traffic goes through the network, as it buffers and debuffers through the equipment and if you've ever been part of a video conference or watched a video stream where things just kind of stop or slow down and then all of a sudden they pick up really quickly and start talking very fast, well, that could be representative of a jitter issue going on. And voice and video applications are sensitive to jitter. But if you're just talking email, web traffic, e-commerce type traffic, uh, not so much. Okay. So one of the first things we think about again is that DNS, the domain name services, how we reconcile a host name or server name to uh, a network IP address. And that bears into our web performance because if the name lookup is slow, then the user will be sitting there waiting for that lookup to happen before they even get to your uh, network 
and your application, wherever it is. So we look at availability, response time, page load time, which is indicative of how complex your page is, and then the throughput or how fast the network is able to uh, get your web page generated across the network uh, to the user. In the next section, we're going to talk about the why and the how. So stand by. In this section, we're going to talk about the why and the how with Cisco Thousand Eyes. How many of you remember the Facebook outage from October 4th in 2021? I do because I was actually sitting and looking at my Thousand Eyes portal, and within a few minutes, the global agents that Cisco has deployed that monitors the health of the internet was starting to show outages from Facebook. And this had pretty broad implications to Facebook, Facebook video, WhatsApp, Instagram, and all of those websites that use federated login services that say, use your Facebook login to this web page had more than a five hour outage related to an unexpected change in their environment. Having the ability to look at global outages and then also the ability to personalize the services for your environment so you can have a perspective of how it impacts you. Maybe you want to look at your, your important employees, your important buildings and facilities, you can build custom dashboards that give you a real-time visibility into what your employee experience is, whether that's employees at home, in a branch office, or a large facility. We can even get visibility into the user's home Wi-Fi and local internet service provider performance. So if you're doing something where you negotiate a large contract with service provider for all of your employees, you might now have information that gives you strategic leverage when you're doing contract negotiations. You can also understand the impact of any laptop constraints that are on that uh, employee's experience as they access your own private services or public services. And one of those examples might be that you could be using SharePoint on a regular basis. And when we use the agent embedded into the employee's browser as an endpoint agent, then we'll get a sense of what their PC is, what uh, manufacturer, what operating system they're using, and their connection, whether it's uh, wired Ethernet or wireless Wi-Fi into their home gateway, out to their service provider, across the VPN if you're using one, and out to other services. And we'll start to measure their experience to identified websites and resources that you provide. Now, Thousand Eyes has several different test types and they can be used for a lot of different parts of network monitoring. Some of them are useful to you as a cloud developer. Some of them are probably more useful to your infrastructure uh, support teams and SRE folks. So BGP tests would be something that your infrastructure folks are really interested in. But as a cloud developer, you would like to look at the agent to agent tests, the agent to server tests, the DNS server tests, and the web or HTTP server tests. If you're doing something that's e-commerce related or web server related, then you probably also want to consider using page load and transaction tests. And the transaction tests we'll talk about in part three in our advanced topics. It's important to note that we bundle some of these tests into very convenient categories. So you don't have to create multiple types of tests. You can say, I want to do a page load test. And the page load test would include web server, network test, and BGP monitoring we can see that the transaction test would include page load, web server, network testing, and BGP monitoring. If our application involved some kind of video or voice type transaction, then if we did the voice 
test, we would include SIP and RTP network and BGP. And these would just happen by virtue of defining the test that we want. So don't double up, try to use the tests in a layered way because you'll get the best benefit of information in a bundled test. Now, what are the agents? I've mentioned these a few times. So there are cloud agents that Cisco manages, and we've located these at over 400 service provider network locations. You don't have to manage these. Cisco is responsible for the deployment, the licensing, the, uh, the maintenance of them, and, and software updates, but you have them available for your own use. The pros of these are that they're quickly used and you don't have to do the maintenance of them. The cons are that uh, you can't redeploy them from where they are. They are fixed in their location, so the perspective of source to target is starting at those cloud agents to wherever you target. And that may be helpful to you, or you may find that you want a little bit more flexibility and want to deploy enterprise agents on your own and an enterprise agent is deployed by you which gives you the ultimate flexibility of placing them anywhere you want they can be deployed as aws ec2 instances through cloud formation and we'll talk about that you can deploy them in your own private cloud or data center using vmware or hyper-v virtualization technologies you can deploy it as a Docker appliance, a Linux package on Ubuntu or Red Hat. Uh, you can even put it in a Raspberry Pi uh, or Intel Nook as software agents running on those uh, little single board computer systems. And it's also embedded in some network infrastructure devices like the Cisco Catalyst uh, 9300 can run it as a Docker container. Endpoint agents are a bit different. These are browser plugins, and you define specifically what websites and services you want to be monitored. This is not an overly permissive collector. It's not looking at everything the customer or your employee can um, access through their browser. But if you say, I want to monitor my employee's ab ability to get to GitHub, then you would define GitHub as a monitored endpoint. And once they access uh, GitHub, we would start collecting their transaction information. Again, these cloud agents are all over the world, 195 cities in 61 countries, including Hawaii and New Zealand, because internet goes there. Uh, these are really good opportunities for you to get a global perspective because your customers may be anywhere in the world. If you're focused in a certain region, then we have these uh, cloud agents and you can identify certain cities. Um, I live in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, so I will sometimes use the Raleigh, North Carolina cloud agent to mimic my access generally in this area out to any other service. When I'm interested in what my specific home or office experience is, then I'll use an enterprise agent deployed in my home or office to get that deep end-to-end -end experience measurement. You can see we also have agents deployed in Asia Pac, and we also have agents deployed with many broadband providers in several key metropolitan areas of the United States. So if we want to measure how AT&T is doing from San Jose with our AT&T based uh, employees, then we would use one of the collectors in that environment. And AWS has deployed uh, many of these agents across their public cloud infrastructure. We can supplement that by deploying our own AWS EC2 instances wherever we want inside our own virtual private clouds. Next up, we're going to talk about how do you work because that bears into how you deploy Thousand Eyes. In this session, we're going to talk about how do you work because that plays into how you deploy your Thousand Eyes agents. 
when you think about where your developers are, one of the questions is, where is the code that they develop? Are they purely cloud native? And maybe they work from home or a branch office, but the development environment is connected to over a VPN and all the code exists in an Amazon environment, right? So the code doesn't live on the laptop in their home office or branch environment. And as they write their code in that Amazon environment, it may access other dependent services in other AWS regions or SaaS services like GitHub and Docker Hub in other environments. Now, they may also operate separately as a teleworker type and the code could be developed on their laptop in their own private office or regular branch environment and then they just access resources across the internet and across uh, AWS and uh, GitHub and Docker Hub as we mentioned before. Or maybe your environment is more hybrid and there's some amount of code that's developed at home, there's some code that's developed and maintained in private data center and cloud or even public. We have to think about where the information that we're concerned about originates and where it tends to go. And that helps us deploy our agents more intelligently. So I've created this example and we're going to talk about Graciana or Grace to her coworkers. She's an application developer in Portugal and she remotely accesses her company's development resources and those are in AWS region US West 1. She is fitting that cloud native model because she accesses other SaaS services for development and production support. She doesn't maintain her code in her home office in Portugal. Her supervisor and project managers are interested in how her experience is from Amadora, Portugal to her company's development environment. Again, this is in US West 1. So we want to know what that looks like because we're going across the North Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> they want to know how her development experience will be and how it goes to the other development SaaS resources like an AWS RDS database Aurora instance in US East 1 and how her development experience goes to GitHub, Jira, and Docker Hub. Finally, we're interested in what her app users experience is because they're going to be all over the world and her app uses services like that database Aurora instance in US East once, but it also uses Vimeo for video hosting. So we want to understand what her user's experience is getting to those services. So her deployment's going to look like these scenarios. First, we're going to have the Cisco Thousand Eyes endpoint agent embedded into Grace's browser so that she would have a perspective of going from her home and her browser out to those SaaS services that she uses like GitHub and Docker Hub. Also, we would deploy an enterprise agent from her home as potentially a Linux virtual machine or even one of those Raspberry Pis to make measurements from her home out to the AWS region where her normal work environment is. Secondly, we'll deploy an enterprise agent in AWS as a CloudFormation deployed EC2 instance targeting other SaaS services that she uses. And then third and finally, cloud agents deployed around the world to represent her user traffic targeting the SaaS endpoints needed by her app. In this session, we're going to talk about how to procure the Thousand Eyes licenses through AWS Marketplace. The first thing we need to do is access our AWS console and then go into the search bar and search for Marketplace. We'll see the services listed and AWS Marketplace subscriptions is where we want to land. When we click that Manage Subscriptions button, then we'll be given an option to go search for Thousand Eyes. 
we just type in Thousand Eyes in the search bar and then it will come back with a few options. The first one will be Cisco Thousand Eyes. We also have some partners that are also offering licenses and managed services through their own private offers and you may be interested in looking at those. We're going to click on the Thousand Eyes option. At this point we can review the SaaS offer, we can look at the pricing and usage and support information. There's also a product video at the bottom if you're interested in getting other information. Uh, take time to do this if you're interested and then click to subscribe when you're ready to move forward. At this point we can look at how we want to set up our contract, one year long, two or three years long and whether we want it to auto renew at the end of our subscription period. We can set up the number of units in our contract options and then review the total contract price. If you're interested in more information about unit cost and consumption, click on that QR code on the screen here and then we'll be able to see more of that information. Once you've finished identifying how to set up your software contract, you will have that Create Contract button available. It will become active and then you can click it. Once you click it, you'll have set up your contract. Now, you can continue through that process, but don't be surprised if a Cisco salesperson contacts you to obtain more information about your use case because sometimes we can optimize and lower the cost of what you're trying to do if we understand the use case. So just a heads up they may be calling. We're back. Now we're going to talk about deploying the Thousand Eyes software enterprise agents and using AWS CloudFormation. The first thing we need to do once our licensing is finished is to access our Thousand Eyes portal and that's at thousandeyes.com. Once you access the portal, click in that login link at the upper right hand corner. You'll see a login screen you may have an environment where you have single sign-on. If so, click that link. But most of us will probably just have, if we're starting from scratch, just a basic user login and password. Once you get into your portal after logging in, you'll see the main dashboard page. It may look a little bit different for you depending on if anybody has changed the layouts because this is, this is something you can customize and personalize. We're going to start by clicking on the upper left hand corner, the cloud and enterprise agents to go ahead and deploy an agent into AWS. Once you get to this screen, you'll see agent settings. Now I've already deployed a few agents and what you're going to do now, because you probably won't see any, is to click on the add new enterprise agent button. Now, what will happen is you'll get this flyout panel and you'll notice that there are several options and tabs here. Right now we're looking at the appliance tab and if we wanted to deploy an OVA virtual instance for VMware or Oracle VirtualBox we could do that. Microsoft Hyper-V or Intel Nook or again my fun little Raspberry Pi type install. Uh, you can do that. Um, there's also options for a Linux package to deploy on Ubuntu or Red Hat, uh, Docker container instances, but we're interested in the infrastructure as uh, service, IaaS, marketplace. And when we click that, we're going to see the Amazon Web Services AWS option. We want to copy our account group token. The account group token essentially links um, our agent to our subscription in our profile. So when we copy that into our clipboard, we'll be ready to paste that later on into our AWS um, cloud formation template. So now we're going to click um, launch in AWS. We'll get our console login if we haven't already. And this is just our normal um, IAM user login to AWS and we'll land into our AWS cloud formation. Now, Cisco has provided a template here that's already pre-populated, 
so that you can use it without having to build your own macros and templates to deploy an EC2 instance. It makes it super simple. So go ahead and use this uh, method. If you want, you can click the View and Designer button, which brings up a uh, graphical workflow representation of what AWS is going to do on the backside to spin up this EC2 instance. And it's going to create that EC2 instance. It's going to apply some security group settings and make sure that it deploys the way that Cisco intended it to in AWS. You can review this if you'd like. It's kind of optional. I think the nerd knobs are kind of neat, but um, you can see what's going to happen on the backside um, behind the scenes when CloudFormation runs. When you're ready, you can click Next. Now you want to give it a stack name and also uh, usually we just give it something meaningful to us. The account token, this is where we paste in that token that we copied from an earlier screen. And then give it a host name and it's, it's suggested to keep the stack name and your host name for this EC2 instance uh, the same. And then if you want to define SSH access into that uh, enterprise agent that we're deploying as an EC2 instance, it's essentially just an Ubuntu virtual machine. But if you want to be able to SSH into it, then you need to identify a key name. And if you don't have one, then you need to go back to your AWS console and EC2 create network and security and create some key pairs for your SSH access. Next, we define our subnet ID and our virtual private cloud identifier so that we can identify in our environment where we're going to place uh, this EC2 instance. We review our options and our settings and then we click Next. When we're finished reviewing, we can click Next one more time. And if we're interested, we can review how much this is going to cost because, you know, that's important. <laughs> so you can click the Estimate Cost link and it will bring up a monthly calculator for you. And you'll see, depending on what the 24-hour spot costs are um, at that point, uh, how much it's going to cost you on demand to run this EC2 instance. And at this time, what I'm seeing is this uh, Thousand Eyes agent is going to deploy a Linux T2 medium instance, and it's going to cost about $34 US per month to run this. Um, if you want to commit to a longer time period, then you can save some money. And if not, then you can just do the on demand as we're showing here. Now when we're done, we can go back to create a stack and it will go ahead and deploy. And it'll start to show a screen somewhat similar to this. You may need to refresh the screen a few times with the refresh or recycle icon to see if it's created, if it's still in process or not. And eventually you're going to land on a finished EC2 instance and then you can look at the stack info and see that the creation is complete. You can start to click through the tabs to see what was deployed, your public and private IP addresses and subnet ID. All the information about your EC2 instance will be here so you can click through, get any network uh, parameter specifics and make sure you keep track of those things because that's specifically the external IP address is going to be how you get back into that instance if you need to. Finally, when we're interested in understanding what the instance looks like from the Thousand Eyes portal, which we'll talk about more detail in the next segment, you'll see that this agent that we deployed was essentially an Ubuntu 18.04.5 long-term support release and the installer was AWS AMI. So we're now confident that this was deployed. 
we know where it went because of the EC2 parameters, and we're ready to move on to our next segment, which will be deploying the Thousand Eyes tests using the Thousand Eyes portal. So up next, part two, provisioning Thousand Eyes, the agents, and tests. Thanks for watching.